Hello, good evening. Good Hello. evening, Prof. Hi, are we available? Yes, yes prof. prof. Okay, okay, okay. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everything so committed last week, but during the last, uh, we had a light on. So it doesn't matter. We are not behind time. We just continue like that. Now, let me share my screen. So we are going to look at dealing with the competition. Dealing with the competition or competitor analysis. Are, they, are, are we going to have more people joining? Dealing with the competition and marketing. Cost rep, are we likely to have more people joining? Yes, sir. You are confident? Yes, sir. How many are we in the class? About 50 something, I'm sure. Yes. Dealing with the competition. So far, so good. What is happening? First web. Yes, sir. So far, what is happening? So, what is happening? The, 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 I think maybe because of traffic, that's why they are annoying. But I could see them joining one after the other. Oh, OK. OK. Now, the course itself, how is it treating you? So it's going well. But Sakai, um, sometimes when we log on, we don't get through to it to get the slides on time. Oh, okay. So sometimes you don't have the slides. Yes, because when you want to log on, it doesn't give you access. Okay, so what we'll try and see whether we'll be able to we'll forward the slide to you. Yes. And you forward it to your batch. Yes, sir. Then that will be faster. Yes, sure. Okay. And but we are told that I don't know, the university says that theoretically they will send somebody to go to Sakai to find out whether the lecturers are lecturing and whether they are they are really working through the class. In other words, they want to monitor what you are doing through Sakai. Sure. So whilst we do that, we still put everything on Sakai. Yes. For information sake, but we could still be working with you to make it faster. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Class, send you my email so that. You okay, email. please do well to send us your email. Yes, so, so we'll do that. I've yes. on the course, Rev. Any other? <laughs> Any other opinion? There's a boy, there's a boy five years joining the class. Please, can we mute? Yes, mute. Mm -hmm. Fifty, please mute. Fifty, please mute. Please, you can do it. Please, can we mute her? She's not even behind us. Okay, okay. 
Okay. Now, apart from the course Rev who made us aware of her problem, is there anybody to in the class? How are the rest of the class feeling? All right. Let's assume that the feeling is okay. Now, dealing with the competition, our objectives is all about how to handle our competitors. But note that the competitive space you occupy will determine the kind of strategies you deal with. That is the, the biggest statement I'll make. The competitive space you occupy will determine the kind of strategies you come up with. Whether you are the leader of the market, your strategy will be different from if you are just the number two or the follower on the market. And that should also differ from the situation where you are just the market nature or the market challenger. So whatever market space you occupy will determine the strategies that you have to apply. And this evening, we'll look at just simply that. So what are the objectives for this evening? First, we want to identify who are we competing with? Who are we competing with? We want to evaluate. Once you identify those we are competing with, we want to evaluate who our competitors are. We'll do the evaluation. We'll know some few things about them. Once you know who you are competing with, you should be able to evaluate them. Then companies normally have what we call the competitive intelligence system, where they use it to collect regular information on who they are competing with or on their competitors. If you know your competitors, then you need to design a system generating regular information from your competitors. So those information is what you need to design your strategies. Then we'll be more concerned with the competitive strategies. Whether you are the market leader, whether you are the follower, whether you are the challenger or the leader, what strategies do you have to bring? And maybe at the end of the session, we may rhetorically ask, why are we dealing so much with customers? So much with competitors rather than customers, which is the focus of marketing. Has marketing now changed to competitor orientation or competitor focus? This is what we'll try to do this evening. That will be more, we'll be more focused on understanding the competitive strategies that firms can apply, whether you are the leader, whether you are the follower. When we talk about competitor analysis, this is what we mean. We want to understand the analysis of the individual competitors. Analysis of the individual competitors in terms of one, the strategies they are using on the market. Two, the objectives they want to achieve on the market. Three, their reaction patterns. You need to understand the reaction patterns of competitors. In other words, when you step on their toes, what will they do? Your aim of doing a detailed competitor analysis is to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the competitor. The strengths and weaknesses of the competitor. What do we mean by competitor analysis? Get their objectives, get their strategies, get to know their reaction patterns so that at the end of the day, you will be able to tell their strengths and their weaknesses. We know in marketing, when you know their strengths, you try to avoid their strengths or neutralize their strengths. When you know their weaknesses, then you take advantage. 
come up with better strategies to take advantage of their weaknesses. That is what competitor analysis is all about. Then, if we go on again, one of the things you could do on your own is to be able to do the competitor expansion plans. You know who you are competing with. Once in a while, you should be able to gauge their future movements. That's what we mean by competitor expansion plan. What is your competitor likely to do next? And normally we use this to illustrate Dell, the expansion plans of Dell. Dell is in a market with products. So if you really want to understand, look at what is happening on the market. That's the customer side. And look at what is happening on the product side. Somebody did competitive expansion plan for Dell and said that, look, in the market, you have individual users of computers, commercial and industrial users of computers, and educational users of competitors, of computers. And when you go to the product side, you have personal computers, hardware and accessories, and then the software. Now, competitor expansion plan simply means that if you want to look at the market, what is happening? They all started with individual uses of computers, moved towards commercial and industrial uses, and are in educational institutions to just brands. When you go to the product side, what Dell is doing is that they started with personal computers, they moved on to hardware and accessories. But one area they haven't gone yet is to look at the software industry. They are not champions in the software industry. So the one who did it, the objective is to look at what is the next major plan of Dell in terms of expansion. What you will see is that for product side, Dell is likely to jump because they have personal computers, they have hardware and accessories. What they don't have is a software. Dell is likely to jump into the software business. And that business is what, if you are there, then you must be protecting yourself or you must be looking for competitive strategies because Dell is likely to come there. Okay, if that is okay, then let's look at forms of competition. Forms of competition. We have what we call the product form competition. And that is purely a competition between brands that are competing neck to neck. And a typical one is the one between Pepsi Cola and Coca-Cola. They are competing neck to neck. Therefore, they become total form competition. There is also another form of competition. Let's look at the brands. We also have one between McDonald's and who is McDonald's competing with? Burger King. So there is a real competition between McDonald's and Burger King. That's why I'm shocked that Burger King has come to Ghana and McDonald's is not here. In fact, in Europe, anywhere you see McDonald's, you see Burger King. Or anywhere you see Burger King, you see McDonald's. Clearly, that is also product form competition. Then you have Product category competition. If it's a product category, then you have products with com competition between products with comparable characteristics. So we can say that, look, soft drinks, all soft drinks are competing because soft drinks all have comparable characteristics. They have generic competition. Yeah, we are looking at products that serve the same needs. Products that serve the same needs. So in some environments, water and soft drinks, they serve the same needs and therefore they, are they could be said to be competing. But in our part of the world here, water and soft drinks don't compete. Because when you are thirsty, take a bottle of soft drink, you realize that you are not okay, you are still looking for water. 
that the water plays a unique role from that of sovereigns. Then you have the budget competition, budget competition. Now, when an employee picks the paycheck, all the things that cry for attention, we call them budget competition. So from the chop money in the household, to the fuel you buy, the school fees, the chop money to kids, all these are competing with your salary. And for attention from your salary. So it means that we call them budget competition. Budget competition. The another thing we can do is to also look at methods of identifying who our competitors are. If you really want to understand who your competitors are, there are two major methods. You can look at it from the management side of the company. In other words, go to a company, talk to the management, and they'll tell you who they are competing with. Or the customer side. In other words, look at the customers of the company. Find out from them who and who are competing in this business. So you can do it from the customer side or you can also do it from the management side. From the management side, the first one is called management opinion. Yeah, you rely on the opinion of managers of the company to know which brands are competing. So walk to a company like Casa Preco. Find out from Casa Preco, who are they competing with? Or go to the Belacqua. Find out from Belacqua Manager. Who are you competing with? And they should know to tell you who they are competing with in their mind. Then another method is what we call strategic groups. Here you look for factors to use as the basis to group the firm. I give you a typical example. In Greater Accra, if you are using geographical location, that is geographical reach. Then all the radio stations in Greater Accra are competing, but they are within the same geographical space. The structure you are using is not just geographical location, but language. Suddenly, the competitive framework changes. Some radio stations are competing, whilst others are not. In other words, if you use geographical location, then each of them and your FM will be competing. But they are all located within the crowd region. But if they use language, then Peace FM and Joy FM are not competing at all. Joy FM may be competing rather with the other stations which speak English. City FM. So you have City FM. Then what again? Peace FM. No, because if they are using language, then you are looking at Joy FM, which is an this star fm so yes the star fm the then there's, there's another one the star fm joy fm and then the oh, yeah. unique fm then this fm rather is complete FM. Happy FM. Happy FM. You see, so if you just use language rather than geographical location, then the, the, the competitive frame changes. So these are the two methods you can use to identify your competitive competitors are either management opinion or strategic groups. Look for suitable factors to use in grouping the firm. Then you can look at the customer base method. Customer base method. Here, you are looking at competing, who and who are competing from the customer side. Hello, Prof. Hi. We lose you at certain points. Your, your voice drops to we can't hear anything. Then it comes back. Uh, Zoom, I don't like that. I have a constant voice. Okay. I have a constant voice. 
But is he okay now? Yeah, yes, yes, please. Okay. So if we are looking at the customer base methods, what it means is that you are looking at who you are competing with from the customer's opinion. And the first one is called direct identification research with customers. So go to the customers, engage them, talk to them, which brands are competing on our market. And I can tell you, the customers will be able to tell us which of the brands are competing. Then you have the second method is brand switching. Yeah, don't go and talk to customers. Just watch them as they buy. And find out the brands they are choosing between. The alternative brands they buy. If today they buy brand A, tomorrow which one do they buy? If you will be able to see, or if it happens that they are alternating among brands, then those are the brands that are competing. So brand switching, don't talk to them, just observe them. And you know which brands they are alternating between. Then you have the third one, which is called position research. Position research. But when the manufacturers manufacture products, they position them to fit a certain place in customers' mind. So position research is to look at how manufacturers have positioned their brands from the customer's perspective. I'll give you one good example. Look at the breweries. You have the JGDL, formerly Kumase Breweries. They have two brands, a Golda and a Star. But Star has been positioned differently from Golda. What is the positioning strategy for Star? Who are the target for Star? If you really want to do position research, find out how manufacturers are positioning their brands. Based on that, you will know which brands are competing. So I'm saying that let's look at Golda and Star. Who are the target for Star? Sir, please, uh, younger, 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 yeah, the younger demographic. Thank you so much. That is right. People below 35 years, between 18 and 35. They are normally the target for star. So most of the things star does is targeted at these people. Then look at Golda. Who are the targets? When so you hear the advert, the one. ultimate beer. So the experienced ones. The experienced ones, yes. the top class people. And so you have all the adverts of Golda. The people are either in Kente, suit, they are playing golf. That should tell you that it's also focusing on another category of people. So yeah, they have two brands. They have positioned them differently so that they will attract different market segments. Now compare them some years ago with their main competitor, which is the club, the club beer. The club beer was competing with them and then somebody did an advert and stated that dear, dear, and one club. That person was elderly. Now the youthful customers of club decided that club is a drink for the agent on Penny Fonson. So most of the youth moved away from club and club realized that their sales had gone down. It was going down every day, going down. People were just the youth were just avoiding it. Significantly, research indicates that the capacity for people to drink reduces when they age or they start aging. Is the youth that drinks more? So if the youth are moving away from star from club, then the the market share for club kept dwindling. But good news, club did this, had a certain strategy for bringing the youth back to the brand. What did they do? What did club do to bring the youth back? I think they After, brought Shandy. Club Shandy. They brought club Shandy. Wow, well, no. 
What did they do to bring their youth back to club? Oh, they changed their bottle. No, oh, they didn't change the Didn't you hear that advert? Charlie High, Charlie Fresh. They reduced their price. They changed the advert. They changed the advert. They changed the advert. Charlie High, Charlie Fresh. Now, if you look at that language, whose language is that? Pusha, Pusha. <laughs> is that you? Young guys. Yeah, the young guys. The young people. That is the young people. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't push that. laughs> the 25 to 30 years people. That is their language. Charlie High, Charlie Fresh. That was the advert that brought the youth back to club. And today it has become the number one selling beer in Ghana. So, yes, based on how the brands have been positioned, you know who and who are competing. And you see, since that day, the club has dropped that beer, beer, and one club. They drop that advert because beer, the annual club for which people or for everybody. Be careful when you are designing these competitive messages, otherwise, you'll be driving people away. Okay, set up a competitive intelligence system. Let me ask you in your companies. How do you collect information on what your competitors are doing? If somebody has a company where they collect regular information on what their competitors are doing, can a person share with us? You want to give us information on what the competitors are doing? Can somebody share with us? Oh, so let me assume that there's no, okay, Mercy. Oh, Mercy, are you late? Yes, Prof. Yes, Mercy. Um, for us, some of the things are easy to find, like uh, competitor pricing. Okay. It's uh, checking their, uh, what we call monolith or the price board. So okay. it's mandatory for every station to keep records of what the competitors within their enclave, um, the price they sell at every week. So that when there are changes, then uh, we know what to do. So yes, okay. we monitor some of the prices. Okay, so you just Sometimes tell us. It's not only the price board, they do what we call under canopy discounts. Okay. Uh, those ones, you send the boys to go and <laughs> find the information for you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So yes, they, they, they know they need to find that information, just that they don't have a system in place to collect it. So yeah. they send their boys Some are to friends. There. Some are friends. Okay, so, so they send some friends to go there and find out what is happening under the canopy. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Mercy. Any other person who can share what they do in their firm to collect regular information on what their competitors are doing? Okay. Now, what we need to know is that as a company, you must collect regular information on what your competitors are doing. What do you do if you want to set up a competitive intelligence system? You have to set a system. The system means that you need an office. You need a, some small laptops. You need recorders. And you need about two, three people working in that office. And their whole job is to be collecting information on what is happening in the competitive system. That's what we call competitive intelligence system. Then you must identify who your competitors are and who are in the strategic group. You assign responsibility for collecting information. So you know that you have assigned A, B, and C, that they should collect information on competitors weekly. Once they collect the data, you must now evaluate the data to find out what is really happening. You should have to evaluate the data. And then, once you get the results, you must disseminate that information to people who matter, not to everybody. People who are in positions 
you must get to know so that decisions are made by responding to what you found on the field. That is what we mean by setting up a competitive intelligence system. Please hang on. I'll be back in some few minutes. Yes, Prof. So yes, if you want to set up a competitive intelligence system, then you are back. Something small like this. Set up the system, a small office, put some computers or laptops there. <coughs> Assign responsibility to two, three people in that office for collecting data on their competitors regularly. Collect the data, evaluate the data, disseminate the information to strategic people and let them respond to what is happening on the field. That is how a competitive intelligence system works. Now, hypothetical market structures and strategies. Let me say that what I'm presenting now are just hypothetical. In marketing, we assume that when you have 40% of the market, you are the market leader. And this is not always so. MTN has more than 40 percent, 50 something percent MTN market share. And then in the banking industry now, the two banks that are leading the market have 23 percent market share. So that is why I call it hypothetical market structures and strategy. But let's assume that anybody with 40 percent start the market. Um, hello, sir. Prof, please. I, I didn't hear any, the name of the two banks you mentioned. Oh, I didn't mention any bank, but I think that it's um, Echo Bank and GCB. Well, 
23% of the okay. market. Yes. Hello? Yes, we are with you. Okay. So, 40% share or more is market leader. Then 30% become the number two. It becomes the market challenger. Then 20% becomes the market follower. Then 10% means that you are the market leader. Now, what we're going to do now is look at the strategies each of these people use to survive on the market. So let's take the first one. Then let me ask you, if you are the market leader, let us Hello, Prof. Yes. Prof, we can't hear you. Oh. Your line keeps going off. It keeps going off. I think from next week, I'll change. I'll look for some earphones and the rest. So let's assume that you have 40% shares. You are the market leader. And let's assume, I'll put the question to my class rep. Class rep, are you there? Yes, sir. Let's assume that we make you tomorrow, we make you the CEO of MTN. With 54% shares. What will be your first priority? Becoming the head of a market leader. What will be your first priority? Um, I'll, I'll try and uh, uh, try my competitor or uh, the next competitor so that um, then I, I try and uh, identify what I would do in order to maintain and um, work to um capture more uh increase my share market share i would i would do my best not to um allow uh, the challenger to overtake me okay so anybody else here yeah salam is here salam tete yes i, I agree with uh, elizabeth I'll, I'll play defense first like to to hold on to what it is that, that we already hold and then um do some kind of uh, um, research on um, the the other the other especially the market challenges to see how we can we can up them okay so from Salem to Lisbeth even though Lisbeth's side did not come clear yes you are the market leader. So yes, you say you would make sure that you get more shares. So you are expanding, I agree. But your core priority, how do I protect my 55%, 54% market share? That becomes your priority. I have 54% of the market. How do I hold on to them? So normally market leaders, what they do is that they defend their market share. So defense market share strategies are the core strategies that market leaders are supposed to do. So the question is, how do you defend? Now, market leader strategies. Bro, you are off again, no bro. Bro, you are on and off again. Uh, bro, we can't hear you. I'm saying that don't worry tomorrow. I promise you, I'm going to buy earphones, earpiece, so that next week you hear all my voice. 
Now, what we are saying is that if you are the market leader, then your strategy should be to expand the total market. Because if you expand the total market, because you are the leader, you get the majority of the new entrants. You may also want to expand your market share. There are many strategies you can use to expand the share. You have to collect some from others. Like what it is said, they will look at the competition and try to see what they can do to take more people from them. But the core priority of a market leader is to defend the market share. In other words, for MTN, Lisbeth will have to look at what to do to defend the 54% share that she has. So, what are the strategies for market defense? Number one, so what this is the hypothetical thing that you have. This is the defender. You are the leader, so you are defending. An attacker is also coming. So, now, what are the strategies that the, team, the defender will use? One, the first one is called position defense. Position defense simply means build walls around the brand so that all the attacks that will be initiated, the brand can stand it. When I say build walls around, elect, elect signposts or elect signposts on the brand such that they can withstand all the attacks that will come. Now, let me look at a typical example of a brand that has used position defense very well. I'm sure you were all in Ghana when dark bar soap entered the Ghanaian market. Dark bar soap was coming from PZ. And we all know that PZ is a multinational, so they are well endowed. Now, when they entered the market, this soap, so, which is a cash cow of Unilever, new part of their market has been attacked. Look at all the things Kiso did and put them together, and they will call, they will define position defense. So let's go into memory. What are some of the things that Kiso did to protect themselves when dark bar soap was coming to the market? Just go into memory lane. Yes, get into memory lane. Look at all the things that Kiso did when Dark Basso. Yes, Salom is there. So I okay. think if I remember correctly, they 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 put out an advert that, that gave the impression that uh, Kiso had been handed down from generations or so something like something of the sort. Yes, creative advert. My grandma gave to my mother. My mother gave it to the tradition goes on. <laughs> then they end up by saying the tradition goes on, which means that you to give it to your daughter. And then they ended up by saying the tradition goes on. That is one creative message they brought. I agree perfectly with you, Tete. Any other? There were more creative messages. Prof. Prof. Yes. Prof. Um, I, I think they intensified their advertising. As in the time that they used to advertise on TV, I think they were almost uh, sponsoring every show on GTV then and uh, Metro TV. Thank you so, so much. Uh, they intensified their promotions, advertising. Yes, I agree. Let me see those who sons I have. Danny, Safo, are you the one who spoke? No problem. Danny, let's hear no from problem. you. What did they do? I also remember, um, like Robert said, they were sponsoring the likes of Akan Drama, which uh, most Ghanaians were willing to watch every Sundays. And then they were what, using what the- What was the name of, Ra of that Akan Drama? Obra. Are you sure? Prof, uh, Kiso Concert Party. Kiso Concert Party. Okay. Yes, yeah, true, true. Kiso Concert And they were using party. the- Yes, they were saying that longest lasting Kiso. And that's like Kiso, when you use it, it lasts longer. Longer and longer. Yeah. 
kids of God's earth party, a baby grow. Come on, there. No, they say kids of God's earth party, a baby grow. Other creative messages they brought. The doffer. Mm hmm. If yes. you be bay, I mean, what name? The new young mother. They are speaking about the reliability of key soap over the years. Then another one which came direct. Yet the move free What is the implication of that statement? There is somebody we have not known for long. They created this kind of advert that rhymed with the people. In addition, they did kiss of promotion. What were some of the kiss of promotions that they did? Oh, I saw, yes, I saw, I think Nana oh. Agua. Yes. Go. Oh, Nana Agua. Cut the kiss of you find a gold bar inside or something. Cut the kiss of you find a gold bar in it. And the gold key that you find, go and to some they found some kiosk with gold, with kiss of. Oh. Use the key to go. Yes, I was going to do Hello. Oh, the line will not allow us. Yes. And what I was saying was that, yes, they had packed some kiosk full of key soap. So if you cut the soap and you find the key, use it to go and open it. The one is open. Everything is in the kiosk. That is a key soap promo. So they did all that. It was a total blitz. Total blink to make sure that key soap is protected. At the end of the day, dark bar soap could not take the shares from key soap. And key soap still remained the number one cash cow for Unilever. That is position. So all the things key soap did comes under position defense. Then let's again move on. We have frank defense. If you want to use plank defense, then you look at the brand, why it is weak, and erect signposts there. So you protect the weaknesses of your brand, not the whole position defense you want to do. Just look at the brand, look at where you are weak, and protect it from there. I speak about this when we come to the attack strategies. Then you have what we call preemptive defense. For us, those of us who like soccer, we say that we say that the best form of defense is to attack. So instead of waiting for them to attack you and defend yourself, begin to look for others and attack them, like your challenger, like your follower, your leaders, attack them and collect more market from them. That is preemptive defense. And you have the counter offensive defense. Yes. When they launch that attack on you, do a counter attack on them. And when you attack, also do a counter attack on them. There are so many ways you can do this. I will explain how to move on. We call them counter offensive defense. That is when they attack you, respond and also attack them. Then the next one is mobile defense. Mobile defense simply means that, can we do another thing that will give us money? Instead of fighting this battle, we have been attacked left and right. So can we do another thing? So normally what you do is that you look for new products and introduce them, or you look for a new technology that can now be used to manufacture the product cheaper. That is mobile defense. 
either a new product is introduced or a new technology is introduced that will produce a product cheaper. We all know that when I was playing them when we come to the, the, the attack side. And the last one is called the, sorry, contraction, contraction defense. Yes, you defend yourself by contracting from the market. In other words, the military call it strategic withdrawal. You withdraw, go and regroup, and relaunch yourself. So if Christopher had realized that, look, Dark Basso was attacking them left and right. One of the things they could have done was to have gone into contraction defense. Yeah, you withdraw from the market, do your homework, whether you want to improve on the product. Maybe you want to add more fragrance to the product, you want to do better packaging, and relaunch yourself again. Contraction defense. These are the strategies that the leader can use to defend itself and protect itself from being attacked. Let me give you a yes. Please, um, the preemptive defense. Yeah. If I heard you right, you did say that you don't wait for them to attack, but yes. rather you look for ways of attacking the customers. No, yes, you look for the ways, the ways of attacking those you are competing with. That is your market challenger, your market follower, and then the market niche. Find ways of attacking them. And take more customers from them. That is what I mean here by empty defense. Don't wait for them. Say, I'm going to defend myself. Rather, plan attack on them. Attacking maybe Vodafone, attacking go, attacking all the rest. Take more market, they, they're more aggressive. That's what I mean here. But let me give you a typical scenario in the US where a company in the US was selling vodka. Vodka. Then the Russian company came out with another vodka brand and charge $5 cheaper. Assuming you were the brand's manager or you are the corporate strategist, what will you do? You're selling vodka, you are the brand leader in the US market. A Russian company entered the market with a Russian brand and decided that they were going to price their brand $5 cheaper. $5 cheaper. The question is, what will you do? Let me listen to the voice of the strategist. What will you do? Or what would you have done? Yes. You have been attacked in a way. Because the Russian firm knew how much you were charging and decided to go $66 or $5 cheaper. Means that they had you in mind when they were charging the five dollars. They wanted part of your market. What will you do? Any hand up? Yes, Patrick. Yeah, good evening, Prof. Good evening, uh, Patrick. My strategies, my strategies will be two. The first one is I will adopt the mobile defense where I will bring, um, I'll create another segment within my portfolio and attack my competitor. So that, that can be a competitor to that particular product they are selling $5 cheaper. Or secondly, uh, that is it to be more risky will be the preemptive defense where I'll adopt more strategy and do huge 
no light that was not um, that will affect their market but i think that the more i give attention to the, that, that particular strategy which is the preemptive strategies in one way or the other it may also give more attention to their products and the product. so i'll hit more with the mobile defense what will you do under the mobile defense brand of products the second one maybe will be with low price Okay. Now, let, thank you so much. Let's go to thank, thank you so you. much. Let's go to Francis. Francis, what will you do, bro? Okay. I will do two the things. Yeah. One, I will uh, add value or premium to the. Defense, you know, you can you hear me? Oh, yes, and we are saying thank you so much. So let's listen to Francis too. Francis, yeah, prof, I'll do two things I will differentiate the existing pro uh, product as a superior product and maintain the price, and then I'll come up with a, a, a less inferior product, a vodka and compete uh, on that one with, at a lower price with this, uh, with a uh, new product, with a, a new entrant. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Francis Tete. Danny Safo, Danny, what would you have? Well, for what me, have um, I would buy the new competitor who has less price than me. I'll buy a lot of his products and destroy them. From the market so that you have um, um less market share you buy the whiskey bottles and destroy them well it's strategy so that is the strategy he will adopt let's listen to salem salem what will you do yes sir um please i agree with francis in that um i'll, I'll adopt the preemptive defense so i'm going to attack their brand on the basis of the fact that I'll, I'll try to, because we are the market leader, I assume that um, we, are, we are already known in the system. So any adverts or any promotional things that we do will be targeted at making the competitor look inferior because of the price. Okay. So, um, it will be like something like the, the, the key soap one, but it has nothing to do with tradition. It has more to do, maybe we could add an element of tradition, but then we are talking more about the fact that we are a quality brand and, and that's the reason why we are on top. Okay, thank you. Now I've seen Precious. Precious, what will you do? Okay, well, just to add to what Salom said, for me, I think I'll just modify my advertising strategies and kind of emphasize more on the value of my product. Okay, now the value of your product lies in clicking. Yeah, click. So you tell them that no, you tell customers that no, our product is more valuable. Because if you went to retake the stock of your product, you take the stock, the next day you take the stock of the foreign product. And he saw that this foreign company is perfect. I'm not saying you are wrong. I'm just um, Bob, I didn't tell you, but I'm saying that you yeah. say you are going oh. to emphasize on the value of your product. The value of uh, yes, yes. The value of vodka is getting you get a little tipsy. So the customer said, "Let me try." Mm -hmm. so he took a thought of your vodka. He got tipsy. The next day, too, he took a thought of that vodka. So he realized that. Ah, what would you have done? Said. Then, Pop, ultimately, I'll just rebrand. You rebrand. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Precious. I've seen Michael. Michael, what would you do? You'll be the last person. Okay. So, Pop, I think that uh, I also go with the counter offensive strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, since they have attacked me, uh, I also attack them. So, I can either do this by uh, increasing my advertising strength by doing more advertisement, or I can as well also uh, decide to uh, decrease my price 
go below what they are they are offering. Since I'm also already known in the market, I think that I'll I'll get my customers back and uh, I'll take out uh, them out of the market. Thank, Thank you, you so much, all those who contributed. But this is what the company did. They produce another bottle, just like the the one the Russian bought, and charge the same price as the Russian. Then they produce another one, smaller than the one the Russian bought, and we're charging five dollars cheaper, and increase the price of the original one by five dollars and call it the premium brand. So yes, if you are worried about what the Russian brought, we have the same thing here. It's the same. Let's say $55 a bottle. Just like the Russian, no problem. Those of you who think that is even expensive, we have another one cheaper, $50. And those of you who want premium vodka, then it's rather $60. But when they did that, they raised their market, their, their annual sales by 40 something percent. It means the Russian vodka did not have any effect on America. And in fact, one of the things they also did was that they started using uh, uh, um, that's home loyalty kind of promotions. This is American brand, buy made an American brand as an American. You know, America and Russia, they always have fights. They fight with their head, even though they don't fight with their hand. So they were able to increase their market, their sales and everything by the strategies they adopted. Now, in Ghana, something also happened. Let me share with you. What? Which one did I open? Excuse me, let me show, let me share that slide with you. That's not the one I opened. So hold, hold on, let me get the that the 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 feed the I was setting. Okay. Now see what is happening here. I'm back. We all know this product. Milo. Yes. Yes, bro. Which is the product of who? Nestle Ghana Limited. And it was a premium brand. Then Cabra Rangers. Or car, car breed people, they found out that look, this brand appeals mostly to the middle and upper class, what about the lower class? So they decided to do this. They came out with a brand called Richoku by Carbri. And that was a sachet. This is a can, but that was a sachet. And they started promoting it. Then Nestle realized that their market has been attacked. So what did they do? They also did this, produce a product called chocolate in sachet. They, the original product is called Milo. 
But after the rich uncle, they come out of chocolate. Now, that was not the end. They produced smaller brands of the milu and came out with pebbles. That one, I couldn't put them there. They called the pebble choco milu. Why do you think that after the carbon people brought rich choco, everything they did, Nestle did, has some choco in the name? In marketing, when you introduce brands to be able to work on competitors' brands they have brought to the market to attack you, marketers call it fighter brands. Now, when you bring them to the market to just come and fight, if they are able to subdue the opponent, you may withdraw them from the market. And if you think that they are also able to carve a niche for themselves, you can let them stay. So yes, what Leslie brought are called fighter brands. Richoko, Chocolim, and Chocomilo. And then smaller versions of the original milo. Guys, I've seen two people whose hands are up. Francis is there, and then Patrick's also there. Francis, what is your concern? Sorry, it's an old answer. Okay. Then, Patrick. Yeah, Prof, um, I want to have a better clarity on this. Um, whether the strategy adopted by Milo to counter Cabri um, can be defined as the mobile defense strategy. Well, it may be mobile defense, it may be counter attack. Because you've been attacked, so you attack back. But if they did this without referring it to the rich code, then it could be mobile because they're looking for new things to do. But this it's not just new things, but it's new things that will help you counter attack the competitor that entered the market, took part of the market away. Okay. Then Patrick, is it the same Patrick? Yeah, um, yes, please, sorry to come again. Then um, if I understand what you're saying, it means um, Nestle was trying to saturate the market and have internal competitors as well as external. But looking at the definition you gave earlier with that of the um, counter attack and that of the mobile defense, I'm trying to use this analysis to define um, these um, the mobile defense. Whether it's clearly it depicts. Let, let, let me tell, let you, me tell you that the mobile defense. I'll give you another Thank example you. so that you see. Mobile defense may not be related to your current product at all, but this one you knew that the chocolate they brought was to counter rich choco. So yes, it's more of bringing the fight a counter offensive attack. You have been attacked with Richoku. So you brought something to come and also stop Richoku. So it's, it's not necessarily mobile. Mobile defense, yes, but it could be more because mobile defense may not be related to your current product. Just looking for something new to do, to bring you extra revenue. Okay. Now, let's now look at the market challenger. You say that when you are number two on the market, you are a challenger. Yes, it's a counter. Hey. When you are number two on the market, then you are a challenger on the market. And for challenges, the only way you can make heroes is to attack the leader or the other non-performing ones. So challengers, their official strategy is attack. Now, let's look at how they attack. You have the defender and the challenger is coming to attack. 
How does he attack? We have something we call the frontal attack. The frontal attack. Frontal attack simply means that you are meeting the leader or the defender head on collusion. Whatever the leader is doing, you are doing the same. But wait, literature tells us that for a frontal attack to work, then the attacker's firepower must be three times bigger than the defender's own. In other words, the, the defender should not be stronger than the attacker. The attacker must be three times stronger than the defender. So that in case you are doing the frontal attack and there's a shortage of ammunition, you know where to get them from. The, the, the second strategy for attackers is what we call the flank attack. Yeah, you know who you are, you're, you're the one you are attacking. You know their weakness. So attack just their weakness. The areas where they are weak, attack there. I'll give you a typical example. When Vodafone was entering the Ghanaian market, they came out of a tagline. How many of you remember it? When Vodafone was entering the Ghanaian market for the first time, they came out of a tagline. Who remembers it? Okay. The, the tagline was simple. Vodafone, the network that really works. The network that really works. It means that what you're saying is that there are some networks that don't work. Or they don't work well. That was the time MTN was so congested that if you had MTN on your left hand, you have another MTN on your right hand. Use this one to call this one, and it tells you that the phone you are calling is out of coverage area. So they were just trying to tell you that, look, some of the networks don't work well, or they don't work. Those of you, if you can look at memory lane, look down memory lane, you found out that the same time Vodafone was doing the network that really works. Tigo was also on the Honey Coochie Coochie advert. Well, the, the whole thing we're trying to tell is that for some phones, for some networks, it's a matter of life and death if you just want to make calls. So he saw the guy who was, hello, hello, climbing a coconut tree, hello, hello, and he yeah. fell. Yes, the fat guy. The fat guy. All they were trying to do is to attack the weaknesses of the leader which was network congestion. The Honey Kuchi Kuchi advert. So clearly, that was a flank attack. They were just attacking the weaknesses of the leader, MTN, or the defender. Then you can also look at encirclement attack, which is number three. Encirclement attack simply means look at the leader and try to encircle the leader. Here, yeah, what we do is that you look at the leader and you encircle the leader with products. Whatever product he does, you encircle him. So look at Caterpillar and Komachu. They are the two leading companies, equipment in the market. What Komachu does is that they will allow Caterpillar to research and develop a good equipment. Then immediately they go to put three around it. So they'll give you three different types. And I'm told that in the shop floor, in the factory of Komachu, the greeting in that place not good morning, good afternoon. No, when you meet your colleague. Prof, we can't hear. Oh, I'm saying that what I read in the literature is that in the shop floor, the factory of Komachu, when you meet your colleague, you don't say good morning. When you meet your colleague, the salutation is simple. Attack. And he or she responds, caterpillar. So everybody in the factory floor has been made to understand that they are just attacking. Or they say encircle, then you say caterpillar. So everybody in the factory floor has been made to understand that we are here encircling caterpillar with our, our different products. 
That is what encirclement attack is all about. Then the fourth one is a bypass attack. A bypass attack is like a mobile. Here, yeah, look for something else to do. That will give you more money. And it's about a new product. It may have no relationship with the existing product or a new technology which could be used to do things better. And I'll give you a typical example too. You all know that when Pepsi Cola realized that they could not win the Cola war, they decided to do a bypass attack. They entered into new product lines. And the first one they did was to go into production of water. Water. So the Pepsi Cola came out with the Aquafilna, Aquafilna brands. Initially, when they brought the Aquafilna brands, Coca-Cola said, no, they will not succeed because there are too many water producers. But they went ahead, sold their brands in the US, and jumped to Europe. Coca-Cola realized that, no, this way if we leave them, they will, they will give us gap. So they came out with Bon Aqua and Dasani. Dasani was the European, or well, the brand they were using to go international. The unfortunate thing is that when they got to the UK and did their launching, they were planning to do their next launching on, in Germany, and the European Union stopped them and asked them to withdraw all the Dasani because they didn't meet the requirement of a pure water in Europe. Clearly, Coca-Cola had an accident in 2005. That is how Pepsi Cola made more money than them worldwide in 2005. Anybody who wants to check can just type Coca-Cola and Dansani in Europe. Well, Coca-Cola and draw up Dansani in Europe. And you read the story there. This is a real story that happened. And since then, Coca-Cola has not been strong with the Dasani or the Bonacqua brands. But they didn't end there. Whilst Coca-Cola was doing all these things, Pepsi Cola decided that, look, let's leave them and go into soft drinks. So not just soft drinks, but they went into the, oh, they produce another, it was a soft mineral. Fruit juice, they decided to go into fruit juice. So whilst Coca-Cola was trying to get into the drug to follow them, when they went Prof, we can't hear you. Oh, we've lost you again. Oh, don't lose me. I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm saying that, yes, when Pepsi Cola fed them with the water, Coca-Cola responded. With the Bon Aqua and the Sunny, but they had problems with it. Pepsi Cola decided that they were taking another giant leap, so they moved into fruit juice. Coca Cola also responded with the Minute Maid. That was a fruit juice. But Coca Cola decided that they were not going to wait for them to give them another gap, so they moved straight into breakfast cereal, and that is they bought the Quaker Oats Company. And now all the Coca Oats now comes from Coca, is owned by Coca Cola, the owner. Pepsi Cola also came back with another cereal that is Coca Oats, but it has a brand of its own. Clearly, these are American companies who are fighting neck to neck on the market. So a bypass attack sometimes may not be related to the current product you are producing at all. It's just a new product you are bringing that can give you more concentration and create a gap with the leader you are attacking. Then the last attack strategy is what we call gorilla attack. We all know how gorillas fight. They don't stand toe to toe and fight. 
They hit you and they, uh, they run. They hit you, they go underground. So gorilla attack means creates periodic problems for the leader, which will compel him to come and respond to it. For example, I can give you a simple illustration. If Vodafone realized that those days that MTN call drops and call conjunction were the issues, they could just get all the facts where they give it to a journalist. One of the mercenary journalists will publish it for them. Then go to the super morning show host. Let them discuss it in the morning. Get serial callers who will call in to confirm the story. 30 days, put the same story on a large and large, and then you do five. Between Monday and Friday and Saturday, look at how you have battered the ground. And uh, what is it, that it is Vodafone that is behind it, assuming they decided to do that. Hello, Prof. Yes, my dear. Please, what you were saying, we didn't hear. You went off again. I'm saying that when you talk about gorilla attack, I started by saying that gorillas don't stand toe to toe to fight with you. They hit you and they go underground. So in marketing, when we talk about gorilla attack, we are looking at creating sporadic problems for the market leader. That will involve getting him to come and respond to certain things. Even if it's about making sure that the brand damage is not mine. Just find out from the lawyers what is the possible fine that could be declared for you if you are found. I'm giving you a typical scenario where Vodafone decides to go gorilla. No, those days that MTN, MTN was not going to leave. All they do is that they collect the facts, they look at how much it's costing customers, give it to a journalist who will publish an article titled How MTN is Raping Ghanaians. Give this same topic to those who host the morning shows. They will all discuss them on the morning shows and get 200 senior callers to call and confirm the stories. Then on Saturday, put it on Alaji and Alaji and news file. And believe me, between Monday and Friday on Saturday, the brand would have been battered. But all these things have is Vodafone that is behind it. That's why you need to consult your lawyers to find out, assuming we are found, what are the possible charges that can be levied on us? So that is what we mean by gorilla attack. Now, those of you who were here in Ghana, during our 2008 elections, yes, after elections, those led the parliamentary seat. Why Nanado won the popular vote? Then, while they were planning to go to the second round, a hit list came up. Graphic published that they had intercepted the mail, which indicates that if MDC wins the second round, they are targeted some people to be killed. Pamabakel, Otabel, Reverend Asante Entry, all these people were targeted to be killed. And it was graphic that reported it, that they had intercepted the mail. They called Mills. Mills, why are you planning to kill these people? He said, I'm me. And this he said, no, they knew nothing about it. Quickly, MPP came and reacted to a press conference and said, the NDC people, they are killers. They've killed before, so they can kill. What were they trying to do? They were just taking off NDC's mind to concentrate on the elections and be responding to unnecessary things. But later on, without any official source do, it came out that that came from North American brand, brand of MPP. I don't oh, have Prof, please, it came out that words. We didn't hear you, please. North American brand of MPP were the one that is still the, the Still the staff. same. Hello, I'm Prof, saying, we can't, can't hear you. I'm saying that the later report we got was that it was coming from North American branch of MPP. Assuming this is correct, then it's a gorilla tactics. That is what I mean by gorilla. Create problem for the market leader. 
and let him come and respond. And while he's responding, you're also creating counter responses. These are the five ways by which you can attack your leader and get more shares. Or you can also go to the market. Yes, Mimi. Mimi's hand is up. Prof, before you move on to the next slide, can you give us give a summary of the various strategies, please? Because you kept, I I couldn't really follow all of it because of the 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 your network issues. Okay, so I said the first one is frontal attack. Where you are meeting the, 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 the defender head on collusion. Whatever he's doing, you are also doing the same. Product, prices, adverts, you are doing the same. But for it to work, then the firepower of the attacker must be three times stronger than the leader. Then we said flank attack, attack their weak areas, the leader's weak areas. That they did with Vodafone, the network that really works, and the Honey Kuchi Kuchi address. They were just attacking the congestion of NTM network. Then we said encirclement, produce or encircle the leader with more products and the rest. I give you a typical example where Kumar did it that they went for Caterpillar to design very good equipment. They put oh. out the program. Every equipment Caterpillar produces, you want to have to move out. Prof, we better go, we can't hear. You can't hear me. I understand you for not like when your colleague was talking and his line yes. was breaking, nobody complained. Anyway, with encirclement, what you do is that you encircle the leader with more products, more options for customers, more prices. The bypass attack means that you leave the current battlefield and introduce new things, either a new product or a new technology. That gave you how FC Cola came out with the Dasani, no, the, Bona, the, the Aquafina brands. They move into water if they realize that they couldn't win the Cola war, then they move into water. And that was a bypass attack which paid off for them. Then we said gorilla attack, hide under the background, create problems for the market leader, and move on. These are the attack strategies I've given you, five of them. I remember they are initiated by the number two on the market, while the defense strategies are just initiated by the number one on the market. All right. Now, you could also have the the market follower. For the market follower, what they are is that they are crucial partners from the team, the challenger and then the defender. So for market followers, what they do normally is that they have no attack strategy of their own. And they also survive on the strategy. Counterfeiter or counterfeiting. So what they do is that they take the original product of the leader and duplicate it on the market and sell it underground. Not in the same channel the leader will sell it. So we call it counterfeiting. And typically, remember, two years ago, I came to my PhD program with jeans. Prof. Yeah. We can't hear, or I can't hear. Okay. I am saying that. The, count, the first thing they do is that they do counterfeiting. And in counterfeiting, you duplicate the original product of the market leader with inferior materials and cheaper prices and sell them underground. The same thing, no change. So you saw some time ago, Wrangler jeans were being sold at the suit. Yes, that was counterfeiting. The same name, but just that the quality and price were different. They have cloned it. Sometimes the, the, the market follower can decide to clone the leader. When you say you are cloning the leader, what it means is that 
you are just making sure that you do some small variation in the leader's product, but you clone the same product. So you have Esther Combi and Exeter Combi, Adidas and Adidas, Sunny and Sony. These are products that have been cloned, the same name, the same type, but just that there are small variations. So you can clone as a strategy for a follower. Mimi's hand is up. Prof, the market follower, is that a, a strategy type? Because you didn't mention it in the um, four that you mentioned. Yeah, I'm saying that it's not a, normally they have no attack strategies, but they survive on certain things they do. Uh, okay, thank you. So the counterfeiting is one way they survive. They duplicate your product, same as you sell it under the ground. So when these people went to Disney people went to China to sell their movies, they realized that all their movies have their versions in Chinese. The Chinese have counterfeited their, their, their movies. So Disney looked around, there are no laws to protect them and they return. So you have counterfeited, then you have cloners. Cloners will take your product, they will bury some small things around it and put on the market. So I gave you a simple example, Adidas and Adidas. That is cloning. Sometimes you, others will decide that, look, we have no study, but we will imitate your product. Take your actual product and we'll just do an imitation of it. But some, the good ones will adapt your product. They'll take your product, modify it to suit their environment. That is adaptation. So for market followers, these are the strategies that they provide you. They don't have any attack strategy. They find ways of copying and duplicating your product in different ways to survive on the market. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my last slide. Next time I meet you, I'm going to look at market segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Nana Adwa, the hand is up. Nana Adwa. Nana Adwa, your head is up. Your hand is up. Oh, is Nana Adwa there? Hello, sir. Yeah, Nana Adwa. Yeah. Nana, I can't hear you. Yeah, you can. Yes, it's, it's time for me to play it back on you, Nana. Oh, is Nana there or she's left? Yes. Oh, yes, uh, please, uh, may have. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> yes. Apart from it uh, being a market a strategy mm -hmm. for the market follower, can the market leader take legal action? Yes. Yes, they can take legal mm -hmm. action if the laws allow them. For example, look at Ghana. We don't produce anything. Yet we have counterfeit um, laws. Such a, a company. Counterfeiting. We have laws, strong laws that protect people when they discover something. You can't just copy them. But some countries like China, their laws are very hazy. If you go and your products are counterfeiting, very little you can do. Put the matter in the court and nobody minds it. A relaxed atmosphere has been created for people to steal. That is that you can be sued if you are found. That's why I said counterfeiters normally they don't sell it in the open, they sell it under the ground. Underground. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Hello, Let's Prof. Hello, Prof. 
Yes. Is yeah, it I was saying that. No, this gifty. Okay. I was saying that with the market follower, we have twenty percent market share. It has no attack strategy. The, the time that you were talking about those things, your line was flipping off and on, so we didn't get that clear. So if you can, yes, I'm go saying that again. they normally don't have an attack strategy. They don't have. They don't want to attack anybody, but they play oh, okay. their strategy based on me too, me too. So whatever you do, they try to do the same. Uh, that is why their strategies include counterfeiting, cloners, imitating, and adaption. Okay. They just try to do what you are doing. Instead of living on their own. Yes, it's whether you are counterfeiting, whether you are cloning, you are just copying. The, the difference is that there's a small variation in cloning. Don't call yours cloning. No. Don't call yours Exeter. No. They'll call yours Esther when you are Exeter. It's like you are making small variations. And for counterfeiting, word to word, toe to toe. No change, but it's only inferior materials and low prices that you are taking from the All right, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Good evening, Prof. Prof, please thank don't you. go. Hey. I shouldn't go. No, your market follower, the words are so similar. I'm trying to find the difference between imitator and adapter. At least counterfeiter and cloner, I can get it. But between imitator and adapter, I don't get the difference. The adapter takes your brand and try to make it fit into its environment. So whatever you have to change on your brand and the brand to meet its environmental needs, you get adapting your brand to meet its environmental needs. So let's assume okay. that. Ghanaians, you don't like. So you taste your brand. The only thing he does is to reduce the sugar content. And the imitator, okay. what the imitator does is that it's the same brand that you are doing, but he tries to emphasize some small differences. So, so you take your brand and try to look for small differences in them. So that he will tell you that I'm imitating you. If I'm adapting your product, then that's okay because I am changing some things so that it will be suitable for my environment. So look an at an imitator oh, is same as clone. The imitator, the cloner makes changes. Yes. Deliberate changes. Not because they want it to fit into your environment, but he makes changes to the brand. Mm -hmm. So you are Adidas, I'm Adibas. Abibas. Yeah. He's just taking advantage of your name, introducing a new name that will sound like yours. But everything he's doing, he's just looking at your product and copying. But the imitator says that, look, let me do something so that this brand can be used here. Let me change something small about it so that it will, it will fit into my environment. As for the adapter, he takes your brand and does something new to it so that it will appear new in his environment. Oh, okay. All right. Somebody say I shouldn't go. Can I, can I now go? Okay, sir. All right. Oh, thank yes, you so much. Prof, you can. Yes, thank you so much for coming and good evening. Thank you too. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. And Hey, people have already left us. 45 people left. <laughs> okay.